How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Just going live. My late night with PBO. So let's check out a few things. Once again, you know how we do it. If you have any questions, just put them in the chat and we'll hit them up. I don't know, man. It's been a long week already. It's just, it's just Tuesday, but we'll see. So I'm checking out my health of my stream. Hope so. hope everybody's having a good day. So I'm just gonna hit it up and kind of get right to it. You see it, and this is just the build uh, from the ban of TikTok. So <laughs> I thought that was. Kind of interesting. We ban a TikTok or trying to ban TikTok. So I just wanted to go over that bill for banning TikTok. More of a um, society level. Some stuff we're gonna look at at the top because a lot of your bills come really from president, president's executive order. So we're gonna chop it up about that. Just get into it. Once again, if you got any questions, just put those into the um, chat and we'll go over them. So I'm just checking out a few things. And it's been a, I need a vacation. So you see it, restrict, restricting the emergency of security threats that risk information and communication technology that was really the restrict act is the name of it um once again this is the uh, act they're using or trying to use them to ban TikTok or any really um software we don't like a software we think is um a danger to the united states people right but let's see if the people worry which is true is is the bill going to overstep and take some privacy away from you as the United States citizen, right? So that's really what we're going to talk about with the uh, Restrict Act. A lot of people thought the Patriot Act was an overstep. And when we looked at the actual bill, they actually mentioned the Patriot Act, which I thought was kind of cool. So we're about to get into it, like I said, and we hit it a couple of times. So I'm sure people are following in. Once again, if you got any questions, just put them in the box. So you see it, restricting the emergency of security threat that risk information and communication technology. Vendors from the United States and allied countries have supplied the world's information communication technologies for decades. In recent years, the global ICT, what you see right there is the information communication and technology supply chain has changed dramatically. A number of prominent foreign vendors many subject to the control of autocratic and illiberal governments have gained significant market share in a variety of uh, internet infrastructure, online communications, network software markets, the software, the growth and prevalence of these untrusted vendors pose serious risk to the nation's eco economic and national security. All right, so untrusted vendors so everybody knows, you know, I do a lot of federal work. And from the federal, we talk about NIST. NIST says you have to do a risk assessment of your vendor, right? And you have to do a supply chain risk assessment, right? So I think this is the framework to try to figure out what does that look like from a nation's uh, take on. What's up, casual economists? Glad you could join me. What's up, Wilton? Good morning over there. We are all present today. I appreciate it. We're going to talk a little bit about nation, which is us and um, bills and acts and how do that uh, supply, how do you do that for foreign vendors, right? Which <laughs> the nation is worried about, right? So once again, we got autocratic and illiberal governments creating software we use. So what is the 
vendor posts security risk to the nation's economy and national security. Once again, this is the Restrict Act, which we saw at the top, restricting the emergence of security threats that risk information and communication act. The act comprehensively addressed the ongoing threat posed by technology from foreign adversaries by bettering empowering the Department of Commerce to review, prevent, and mitigate ICT transactions that pose undue risk and protecting the United States supply chain now and in the future. Because remember, Caseas got hacked. There was malware and um, nation states putting stuff in the uh, pipeline, right? And we couldn't get gas for a minute. So this, and there's a lot of times when PC comes from overseas, it already has malware and, and uh, dangerous things on them. So how do we review those companies to make sure the software, hardware, you know, even components are good for the United States without uh, issues with them? So that's what we tipped on on today. So the challenge over the past years, foreign technology, including telecommunication equipment, social media applications, security software, e-commerce platforms have entered the United States market and become an increasingly embedded with our information and communication network, posing novel threats to United States citizens' data, United States critical infrastructure, and the privacy of American and business communication or information ecosystem, and the security of everyday products. All right, so... Like I said, the big one right now is um, TikTok, right? Should we um, let people use it? Is it bugs in there? And they obviously are naming some more pro more products. Notable products such as Kaspersky antivirus, telecommunication supplier Highway, uh, software products firms that are based in the People's Republic of China, Gain traction while the United States government struggled to identify and respond to the threats posed by these products in a timely manner. Growing concern with consumer software vendors in PRC, the public People's Public of China, such as Bike Dance, TikTok, Ten Cents, WeChat, and Alibaba's Alipay, have raised serious concern about the lack of consistent policies to identify threats from foreign ICT products insufficient authorities to act uh, decisively and comprehensively to address them. Further illuminating these concerns, the top two apps by absolutely downloading the United States from January 15, 2023, February 13, were from the RPC, Time Mo, and ByteDance. Individual agencies attempted to utilize their various authorities to address the foreign threats within their own jurisdiction, but efforts has often been disjointed, failed to comprehensively address, identify risks, uh, simply provide slow and under suited to the complexity and interconnection of the global supply chain. Further, these efforts often rely on antiquated authorities delegated to presidents by Congress in a pre-digital age. All right, so I think currently right now, <laughs> we're struggling to figure out what agencies should review certain things. I'm still surprised because <laughs> says is an oil company. They gave that to TSA. I always think of TSA as patting you down at the airport. So I think they try to figure out from a nation state what um, agencies should do what. We got a lot of agencies doing a lot of different things. So I think we're still <laughs> trying to master that. So. The new approaches needed to be uh, systematic, reviewing just challenging proposed by the technology from foreign adversaries. Both current and previous administration have rallied around a more holistic solution. They're granting it to the Department of Commerce authority to review, block, and mitigate a range of transactions involving foreign information and communication technology and pose undue risk. For some reason, I thought that would be Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> but once again, we had a lot of commerce, though, is right. We doing business, uh, selling stuff, right, from a commerce perspective. But still, um, every product, even coming to the United States, I think should have a security review. <laughs> and like we talked about that, supply chain review and a risk assessment. 
Well, once again, we do that from companies and government agencies. How do you do that from a whole nation with our foreign adversaries, right? So I think that's what they're struggling with. See what Wilton said. This is when the firmware on your system never updated. A third party vendor would like to know what their product and will and tracking software to report live. Yep, that's a problem, right? Especially if you go into the People's Republic of China with your information, right? So I think as the United States, we're trying to figure that out, right? What does that look like and how are we going to get that done? And two is we're going to review the bill, the big bill. <laughs> so you, you might want to get some popcorn for the replay. So we're going to go through about 30 pages and pick out because the bill for me is a little too broad. So I think you can block actually United States companies, uh, applications, a la TikTok. So we want to make sure we're doing the right thing and we're not overdoing it so the government can block anything they want, right? So I think that's two things is, is it strong enough to do, once again, a risk assessment and a supply chain review on a foreign uh, companies? And if they don't give you the access, can you block them? And two is, are you taking uh, privacy away from U.S. citizens, right? So that's a couple of things we're going to look at as we read through these uh, pages. Once again, if you want to uh, pivot to something else in tech or cybersecurity, put it in the chat. <laughs> I'm cool with that. So what's the solution? What is the solution, right? The Restrict Act established a risk-based process tailored to be rapidly changing technology by directing the Department of Commerce to identify and mitigate foreign threats to information and communication technology products and services. So Department of Commerce is going to ramp up to do that right so they're going to hire people they're going to use consultants right because that's a different skill set than i think what they have because you got to understand databases networking half the time they have it in a foreign cloud or even in aws cloud right because tiktok is actually supposed to be moving to oracle's cloud so how do you do a risk-based risk assessment slash supply chain in an oracle cloud right so that's a certain skill set you have to get to this measure risk-based approach is especially vital in context of personal communication services where federal courts have blocked prior uh, efforts to take remedial steps against foreign software vendors as insufficiently tailored and based on insufficiently uh substitute substitution risk right so basically they're not doing a risk assessment on big companies like TikTok, right? I, I did a video, 60 Minutes did a video. The FBI director didn't think TikTok was secure. It was leaking information back to a foreign adversary. So how do we review that so we can really uh, make that call and make that decision? So that's what this act is supposed to do. The Restricted Emergence of Security Threats and Risk Information and Communication Technology Act would require the Secretary of Commerce to establish procedures to identify, deter, disrupt, prevent, prohibit, and mitigate transactions involving information and communication technology products in which any, right here, foreign adversary has an interest and pose undue or an acceptable risk to national security. Right, so we let the Secretary of Commerce with his department make that decision, right? The question is, are they qualified to make that decision, right? Once again, from a TikTok ban or banning anything, right? Huawei, we actually ban their networking gear, and their networking gear theoretically is better than Cisco. So was that a good thing for the country or a bad thing for the country, right? Once again, Secretary of Commerce is going to make that decision prioritize evaluate products using critical infrastructure integral to telecommunications products pertaining to a range defining emergency foundation and disruptive software in a series of national security uh issues right so if you look at there's 14 critical infrastructures in the united states everything from the electric grid, water to dams to nuclear plants, 
right? All of those have software and products in there, right? So the security secretary of commerce will be making calls on if that software is appropriate to run right in that area, right? So I think that's what they're trying to do. Enable a comprehensive action to address risk of untrusted uh, ICT, but we're requiring the secretary to take up consideration of concerning activities identified by other uh, entities. Educate the public and business communities about the threat requiring the secretary of commerce to coordinate with the director of national intelligence to provide a declassified information of how transactions denied or otherwise mitigated pose an undue or unacceptable risk. Right. So obviously you need more security people, right? Um, once again, doing security reviews and supply chain risk assessments. Um, once again, that's a unique skill set. So you got, once again, web server, app server, databases, networking guys. Half the time, uh, a lot of those guys are up in clouds, even in the United States clouds, right? So um, you need to figure out how you're going to do a risk assessment on there, right? So I think in a, probably a week, I probably walked through a high-level risk assessment of what that would look like from a potential vendor if you were doing um, business with the government, like if you're doing uh, selling something to the state or the feds, what would a security assessment look like for that? Um, which, <laughs> which is a pain, right? And two is, what if the company disagrees <laughs> with your security assessment? I've had people <laughs> disagree with my security assessment. So what does that look like, right, from a foreign company disagreeing with the United States, which happens all the time? What can you, you know, have a redo? How can you file a complaint, right? Because after a while, right, we know that's going to be, even though they said it's not, some of that stuff's going to be politically motivated or what it's going to look like, right? So let's look at that um, bill. We're just going to kind of check it out. Make it big for the old people for me. <laughs> so we're just going to uh, uh, kind of flow through it and talk about uh, stuff I see as an issue. Once again, this bill is going to block TikTok. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. Vendors will have to check it out, put a warranty certificate like they do with electric products. That way products are verified, access practical, and will not only. No, that's true. That's true. Uh, my ex boss, he used to always go, uh, we need to give it a, the, the good housekeeping seal of improvement, right? Um, the thing we worry about, Wilton, is who's qualified to do that. And, right, we got to make it nonpartisan. If you look at FedRAMP, that's what the government did for all the uh, cloud vendors. You go through their um, third party assessment, which is really the big guys. They come out and give you that good housekeeping seal to do a uh, business in the cloud for federal companies, right? So I think we need to figure out what does that look like from um, foreign companies? Because let's be real, TikTok is basically API. They're doing the same thing as Facebook, Instagram, right? They're keeping track of your privacy, right? They just got a, they got an algorithm, right? So uh, they got a database. They got out of China. They put it in Oracle. So they did that. So they're trying to figure out uh, what other things they need. What's up, Shane? Um, like a TikTok. <laughs> I, know, I know. I think that I think the kids are going to rise up and riot. So I think that's why they're trying to figure out what, what does this look like. Because if you ever see, I did a TikTok thing. The thing is, the TikTok here is not the same as TikTok in China. Right. So on TikTok China, they're they're uh, recommending you be a doctor in nuclear physics. Over here, they ranking you to be a, a social media influencer and a dancer. Right. So if that happens over two or three generations, they got doctors and we got dancers. Right. So Shane. So I think the government's trying to get a handle. But two is. I believe there's some freedom of speech and people make life choices. Right. So. 
But so we got to figure out what that balance is. Shout out to um, Citizen Lou. We were talking about old people blocking TikTok, right? And uh, not keeping up with the laws. All right. So that's kind of what made me do it. Let's kind of look at the act, look at the laws and look at the problem. Right. So what we looked at earlier was the summary. And we're going to skirt through this because this is a big bill. But let's look at some of the parts of the actual bill. Um, and I talked about this actually in another uh, video is part of cybersecurity jobs at a high level. And I do this sometimes is looking at government bills, figuring out what's good and bad about it. figure out if your agency or company right is going to be in there and what laws that could be blocking something your company's trying to do in the future right so you got to look at the terms and conditions and look at the strategic plan of what the united states is trying to do right I, in here they didn't really reference any uh u.s companies right so i think from that perspective you're going to be okay but let's look at it once again from a strategic direction because they actually <laughs> protest and i believe uh they know that in China when they did it, right? So I think they understand they got the the hooks into the kids. That's what people worry about, right? So if they love it, can you tell them how to vote? Can you tell them uh, to make this company more profitable than that company? Can you start steering the direction of kids if you if you really have their minds uh, on TikTok, right? And I think that's one thing. Uh, it's really called misinformation and disinformation. Could you start using that to get things you want passed or not passed or things stop in the government? All right. So those are some things I think the United States government is worried about. So let's peruse through this real quick. So that's the bill. We talked about the short title right there, which is not short. The restricting the emergence of security threats that risk information communication technology act aka the wrist act so right they're going what's classified national security information information that has been determined pursuit of executive order 3526 uh relating to classified national security information or any predecessor or successor uh control holding uh means holding with the power redirect so any company that has power, even if the company's in the United States, right, from a holding company, right? So ICT covers what entities? Foreign adversaries, entities subject to jurisdiction or organized under the law of foreign adversaries, an entity owned, directed, or controlled by entity described in subparagraph, including other holding structures uh, designed or intended to evade the circumstance. That has me nervous because some of those uh, entities sound like United States company, right? So now we went from banning foreign companies to being the ban of United States company, right? So that those parts, right? And I know I'm kind of flowing through, but all these entities, foreign advisor, I could be United States company and getting advice from Tencent in Japan because their algorithms are good. Maybe I want to do business in there, right? That doesn't mean they have control, but that's foreign advisor to me is too broad, right? Um, like once again, foreign advisor, an entity owned, director to control, entity describing sub paragraph. Um, once again, a cover entity foreign advisor entity subject to jurisdiction organized under a law of foreign advisory entity owned directed or controlled by person described they don't give a percentage is that 51 49 10 right so this bill is a little too broad for me so um i think you can actually ban united states companies so I don't know. I might take notes and send it to my congressman. Also, <laughs> now, but from a serious note, from a cybersecurity perspective, when you read stuff like this, I've been doing it forever. You notes, you start jotting down the things you're not comfortable with, right? So they're talking about writing things they're not comfortable with for a foreign company. I'm not comfortable with because they don't tell you the foreign adversaries. They don't give you a percentage of it. Let's see. Structure to which designer intended to circumvent timing. 
term trans uh transaction includes current past or potential future transaction so with that being current or past if TikTok sells to Oracle it still was in the past so can they still get a good seal of health right so here's the Patriot Act the term critical structure was meaning United States Patriot Act the term entity means any of the following a firm government agency department labor union fraternal uh social organization partnership trust joint venture cooperation once again those terms are too broad right so for me i think you can <laughs> you can block a united states company right for me i want to focus on foreign companies and that's what a lot of people thought the patriot act was too broad and for me this bill is too broad i think you can block we need to put percentage is that 49 percent um of your company's foreign 20 percent 10 percent so now really the government can just start blocking any company they want all right good luck what you uh going for casual economist what you interviewing for tomorrow if you don't mind telling if you don't want to jinx yourself you can say i'll tell you tomorrow <laughs> hello what's up clint so we're going over salute we're just looking over the restrict act this is the act they were using the block they're going to use to block um TikTok. Um, I just was going through from um, security, cybersecurity. No, that's what I do. Part of that is risk assessment and a supply chain, right? So we need to get comfortable doing that. And since this act is at the society level, we talked about doing bigger society things. So I'm like, let me look at the restrict that. So right now, I think the act is too broad. You need to put a percentage of, okay, if anything over 30%, uh foreign we're blocking it over 40 over 50 51 right they just say general terms like we can block what we want to block but they're the government right they always do that right so i'm sure the aclu is going to chime in they're usually pretty good with their their legal staff so once again we're just going to hit it and peruse through it once again they don't put a percentage of what your company needs to be to block it uh executive department foreign adversaries we we talked about that so see if it uh, means any foreign government or regime that's determined by the secretary to pursue section three and eight those are a list of nations that we don't like right so that's cool includes uh, unless removed by the secretary peoples of china hong kong uh special administration macro Islamic Republic of Iran, which we knew, Korea, Russia, Bavarian of okay, Venezuela. Once again, we talked terms of holding. This could be equity, interest, security, shares, membership, uh, clues without limitation, uh, covered entities. We talked about that. Oh, has less than a hundred thousand state based uh annual active users so that's cool they kind of put a cap on the active users but any good software is going to have more than a million or a million units so so that's that's kind of my arbitrary i mean because especially if you're talking about social media you know there's kids in the ninth grade got a million users right so i mean once again it's it's too broad i think we need to lock it down i like them naming the adversaries at least but once again they didn't name the level of percentage in your company they had to have and two is that list is kind of fluid too because we take on adversaries and put them on and off uh the reason i know that i used to work for dod and a large state agency so if anybody was traveling to any one of those <laughs> We, we try not to give them a laptop. You try to give them an iPad so you can erase them when they got back. Right? A lot of times when you have hard hard drives and hardware, a lot of times with um, an iPad or, or an Android version of that, you can just erase it and just give it to a school. It was so cheap. Because sometimes when they get malware, it loads up in memory and you can never get it off. You going to china iran or any of those big guys nah we, we we're formatting that and even if we format it we still might not use it right 
So the term person means a natural person includes a citizen or nas a national of the United States or foreign entity. The terms relative, uh, executive department, agency heads, we talking about the big guys, secretaries of state, uh, secretary of treasury, secretary of defense, attorney general, homeland security. So really all the big agencies. Um, to me, they're missing TSA. They talked about the Department of Commerce was going to do the review. They don't even have that in there. So there's a couple things they're missing. So the big thing so far is the percentage of your company from a foreign. Um, the list is kind of fluid for your national, um, your enemies. And they had a couple look like large agencies was missing for review. The term relevant committees of Congress, you see them right there. Uh, Committee of Congress, Science and Transportation, Judicial, Homeland Security. It seemed like they would have duplicated that. But once again, it's just government agencies. We're going to start hitting up big pieces of addressing information and communication technology projects and services that pose an undue or unacceptable risk. So the question is, what is that, right? From a risk uh, point, we like to have numbers, right? So we can have percentages, numbers, of how many findings, how many vulnerabilities, how many cat ones and twos, right? So you can have a, a number and you can come up with a, a number specific of, does this pass or does this not? Right now, it's it's kind of loose, so you can kind of block anybody or let anybody in, which is, I guess, normal for your first bill, right? So, catastrophic effect, security, resilience of the critical infrastructure or digital economy, interfering in or altering the results of reported uh, federal elections or determined coordination by the attorney general. uh court uh, criminal activities by foreign adversaries and design to undermine democratic processes and uh, institutions or still policies or regulatory decisions in a favor of strategic operations we got that going on facebook now on information and disinformation right so they can get you wind up to get you to vote or not to, to vote right and facebook is trying to get a handle that so we banning facebook right so um you know coercive or criminal activity once again information and disinformation has been on uh, facebook for a long time right and so i think that's where you start getting a little out of bounds with it i guess other poses are undo and unacceptable risk once again what's that metric for you to come up with that right let's see let me hit that Got my eyes on CSA Plus track. Oh, that's really CYSA Plus is a good one. What's up, NC workers? Shout out to him. I wait tomorrow. Tech relay. <laughs> Don't be nervous, casual. No, I ain't gonna say that. I, I had an interview myself. I I just been doing this so long, casual. Just go and be. Uh, you know, you've been studying. You've been grinding. Just be great, man. That's all I got for you. Like I said, once you get 40 years in the game, <laughs> what's up, man? Glad you could make it. Once again, we're just looking at the bill for uh, blocking TikTok to restrict that. Um, just kind of perusing through real quick from a society level. Uh, what we think, I think, number one, it's overbroad. You don't give a percentage. Um, you got 90,000 agencies. I think we need to get our infrastructure there. And two is, what's the, and maybe be at the bottom. When you do a Fed rep assessment, there's a process. There's a goal. There's how many findings you can have. Uh, um, poem. You, you got this many months to fix this type of finding, right? There's none of that in here, right? We're to the bottom, but so to me, that makes it too subjective, right? So shout out to Citizen Lou. We were chopping it up about it. Uh, block of TikTok. So that made me want to actually look at the, uh, the bill that was coming through. So let's keep grinding on the bill. Okay, we got some time no later than 180 days after the date of this enactment uh, and cost of consultation with the relevant executives. Uh, determine no later than 180 days after the secretary initiates such a review, uh, such transaction process. 
poses an undue and acceptable risk and qualifies for a covered transaction with the respect to that published explanation if practical and consistent with national security and law enforcement interests of the United States in coordination with the national security uh, mitigated under paragraph one meets the criteria so let's see what four is addressing information and communication technology products and services holding undue successful I thought that's what it said above so let's kind of refer to the president's cover holding we talked about cover holding at the top administrative uh, procedures and requirements in inapplicable should not apply to any uh, referral by the secretary president subject section 13 my covered holdings we look talked about cover holdings above entity uh national security uh trust uh bank account all that for a covered entity but once again it didn't give you the percentage of if you got this over a foreign company then we consider you a foreign is that 51 40 30 20 and once again i didn't see any percentage right so if you got one percent does that make you a foreign <laughs> foreign company controlled by a, a foreign nation right the united states operation assets property of the cover entity any tangible intangible assets were located or used to support or enable the use of the product any data obtained or derived from the user product so once again they're super broad they don't have any percentages president should announce decision no later than 30 days after the date enforcement of divestment see they're trying to get uh TikTok to divest right now the president may direct the attorney general to seek appropriate relief including divestment relief district courts of the united states but once again they didn't say what percentage of it has to be in the company we know TikTok is 100 percent owned in china but i still would like to see those metrics in here right so we can kind of figure out what that is from from a nation state right and once again um nist fair rep and all the big things you got to do a security assessment and a supply chain assessment for the united states they believe TikTok, right is software from a risk assessment they need to do so they putting together this act to figure out how how to do that right now i don't I think they're kind of doing it at a high level, but they're trying to formalize it, right? And get a, a process and procedure in there, which I haven't seen yet. So let's keep reading and see if we get there. Considerations, information and communication products and services used by a party to cover transactions. Once again, it's in policy directive 21. Look, 2013, man, that's, that's 10 years old. Yeah, man, so we can't be using directives from, 10 years old right for infrastructure and security how much uh cloud has grown in 10 years so once again um it's a little weak software and hardware what do they believe are in the telecommunication products and this is really with TikTok and highway the networking company wireless networks mobile satellite satellite operation control cable access wireline core networking long and short haul networks edge computing that's the new thing right edge aws has a ton of edge computing is instead of it going back to your data center or the aws data center they have edge uh computing centers out in each major cities so your product could hit there and do a little calculation so it doesn't have to go all the way back to your data center right they got three or four big data centers on the east and west coast right but they have smaller edge centers that do some of your processing so you can get lightning quick um response once again sensitive personal data with respect greater than a million persons in the united states we all know if your software is hot like TikTok or facebook they got ha facebook's got half the planet so a million persons it's not a it's not really a, a large software anymore right so internet hosting services cloud-based machine learning managed service content delivery internet network based unmanned vehicles you know we're talking about autonomous driving's coming right so we know all the 
Japanese and Chinese companies coming with their unmanned, and we got our our unmanned, right? So we know that's hot. Software design, usually in primary and connecting with communication. Once again, they keep throwing out that million persons, which for me is small. If you got something hot, you're going to easily have a million subscribers. I try to say that I only got uh, 2,000 <laughs> subscribers on, on YouTube, but I still say if you're hot, you have more than a million subscribers. So once again, we're just perusing, just hitting pretty hard. Um, once again, the Restrict Act, that's what they're using to block TikTok and future applications they don't like, right? I think they're going to use it to block Huawei, the networking company out of Japan. Once again, desktop application, mobile, gaming, payment. So we know all the hot apps. Um, communications, artificial intelligence, machine learning, we know that's hot. Quantum keys, quantum computing is coming. So they're trying to get ahead of the curve. Post-quantum cryptography, autonomous systems, advanced robots, right? So we know chat GBTs in there, right? So they're just looking at all of that. Consider relatable to undo an unacceptable risk. Once again, Homeland Security, Secretary of Defense, Department, Director of National Intelligence, FBI, CIA, they all in there, right? So we know all those three letters. Any actual potential threats to execution of national critical infrastructure identified by the Director of Cybersecurity and Infrastructure, right? So we knew CISA was going to be in there, which is that. Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency. They handle cybersecurity with the big infrastructure. Um, there's 14 areas they believe are critical in the United States, right? So that with software, they want to just kind of make sure they have that locked down from a risk assessment, nothing big. Designation of foreign adversaries. Once again, there's a list. Removal of designation. So we kind of kind of... Resolution of disposable, designation of removable or foreign adversaries. So we're going to dig down on that. What is the resolution? Once again, the government's got to start doing a risk assessment from a supply chain from all these foreign companies. Especially TikTok has, I think, 150 million users. So you have 150 million devices on United States soil, which you really ain't did a security review yet, right? So... This is trying to get the framework from what a security review looks like. And we're going to do one online soon, right? So you got the management terms and conditions, um, policies and procedures, how you're going to um, destruction of PII, right? And I should have brought it up, but TikTok keeps a lot of personal information ip addresses and all that and a lot of that's flowing back to china right so once again what does the united states have to do a security review on a foreign entity right once again so they're trying to get the framework that's the restrict act so let's kind of look at um we probably jump back over and do the summary real quick because i've just got a few people again <laughs> but let's keep going real quick Resolution of disposal of designation of removal and foreign adversaries. Once again, we talked about the covering entities. They named them. Joint resolution of the disapproval of removal of designation means a joint resolution of matter after resolving the cause of which has followed. The Congress disapprove of the removal of the designation of the security commerce of a foreign agency. The Technology Service Supply Chain Act, you see when they did it, 2023, from Caseas, when they when we uh, couldn't get gas, and such removal have no force or effect of commerce, provides specific evidence of relevant to the committee. The initiation in the event the secretary designated a foreign government regime as a foreign adversary, or remove such a designation, a joint resolution disapproval of the designation uh, during a 60 calendar day period provided in paragraph one, a covered joint resolution. It's got to be by the senator, a majority leader, House of Representatives. See, when you start putting stuff in like that, it's going to be, to me, you're making it political. You need to give it to the Department of Commerce, CIA, uh homeland security 
somebody who's not i mean that's a political spot they don't have any security background so why would you have the majority and minority leader in there right so one issue i have once again we're just flowing through real quick reporting and discharging the Rayleigh committee of houses cover resolution uh, has not reported uh within 10 legislation days after data referral the committee can discharge from further consideration so if you have findings right what's the time limit you have to get them approved or in there right so you can talk about them. same thing for fair ramp they give you a certain time if you're over the time they can block your software right so i think i know they're putting those requirements inside the restrict act right they're just not doing a very good job at it right? consideration the cover joint resolution shall be considered as read all points of the order against the resolution against consideration away previous questions shall be considered as orders on the cover joint resolution Final passage, except two hours of debate, equally divided and controlled by the sponsor. So I guess you you get two hours if you have issues with your software, right? To talk about it, right? Which is crazy. Once again, reporting and discharge. We're just gonna keep kind of flowing to some of the bigger stuff. Uh, when you're talking about the debates, right? So when you got the majority and my li minority leader talking about the bill and how to get it, right? That's political. Right. We want to get back to how are you going to actually do a risk assessment of the software, right? So, uh, let's see. Implementing of authorities. Carrying out responsibility under this act, the secretary may establish such regulations and rules and procedures. Classes of transactions. Reviewing. Um, regulations implementing uh prohibiting mitigating measures the secretary may issue guidance including advisory opinion list of foreign persons additional authorities once again from a risk assessment this is all political right where where because and we i've got a fed ramp video right so where is your findings where is your poems who, who's going to review them? What companies are going to review them? Does those foreign companies have political ends to the people that are going to review it? Fed Ramp Pass is called 3PAO, is which is about 20 companies that can review Fed Ramp. So I'm assuming they're going to use that list for the foreign list because those really are the top guys, I think, in the United States. So I'm assuming you're going to do that list. But what if those companies has foreign investments or foreign people on their board? right how do you how do you what are they going to do for that right so we're going to keep perusing right i don't want to read it uh pervade i'm just talking about a high level view of what this bill is going to enact for me the bill is insufficient currently as it's written they're still working on it so hopefully those are some of the things they're going to put out there disclosure notwithstanding paragraphs the secretary may disclose information documentation that are not otherwise publicly or commercially available in the following circumstance pursuit or administrative judicial process act of congress committee of congress federal state or local entities to any foreign government if such a request is important to the national security or actions of the secretary but only to the extent necessary by the national security if any party to whom the information or document contains to such the disclosure if the secretary determines so on unreviewable discretion of the secretary to release such information is in the national interest so if i'm a company and i got proprietary information are you going to release it to the whole country are you going to release it to my competitors right even though china does that a lot when we do software but for us what does that look like once again that's a that's a problem right so at worst we that should be closely held with a couple companies with an nda and that should never be able to be released especially if you can block me why would you release that to the national interest of the united states so why would you release that to other people right so that sound more like a move from china than the united states so once again we just hit some parts um 
I done hit about five things. I think why this act isn't <laughs> appropriate. And two is they're still going over, still in the grind. So I'm sure they're still going to add a ton of things to it, I would hope, right? So I don't know. I might send my edits <laughs> to it. I don't know. I don't know. So um, enforcement. Uh, president should rely on delegation secretary, right? So they're going to give it to commerce. Action by designees and conducting and investigating uh, employees of federal agencies that the paragraph made to the extent necessary, proper enforcement, exercise such authority, who's permitted activities, inspect, search, detain, seize, or impose temporary deny order, orders, Require a spec obtain books, records. This is software, right? <laughs> so where, where is that at? Administrator oath of confidence, obtain court orders, enforcement of subpoenas, penalties, uh, general stuff. I said I'm just perusing it real quick. Uh, once again, it's, <laughs> it's if I'm a foreign company, right? You get a little nervous when you see orders like this and the assessment once again they don't have a frame right they don't they're still talking at a high level they don't have a process once again like NIS, fed ramp and even hipaa from a cybersecurity perspective right they don't have any any of that that i've seen in here and we're almost done right it says specifically authorizing sub chapters regulation and directives Department of Commerce, no person may alter any of the orders. Right, we're still talking about the orders. Right, we haven't got to criminal penalties. That's still from the orders. Judicial review. As many given terms section, USC app includes any information or material that may be determined by the federal government. Pursuant to the executive order and restrictive data. Right. And so that's the big part is what classification are you going to use to say it's of national security importance? All right. Is tracking the IP of national security? Are they giving their username? They're not giving you your social security numbers, right? Uh, I don't think you're giving addresses, right? So what data for data classification are you going to use in this order to say? It's PII over or for national security, right? So I think they haven't framed that up very well from what that's going to look like and what that's going to be, right? Petition, like I said, I'm just kind of flowing through it. I read some of it earlier, so I'm just hitting the high parts. Information under seal, uh, but you can get it unsealed, right? So relationship to other authorities. We already know, right? Federal law, processing regulation. So all the agencies are gonna be working together. Other provisions of federal law, including federal acquisition regulation, International Emergency Powers Act, uh, Department of Defense Product Act, Defense Product Act of 1950. Come on, man, we gotta, we gotta get it up. Come on, man, that's too old. All right, once again, so. We gonna hit the summary real quick, then we're gonna wrap it up. Transition. Um, once again, they're still working on it, but from a cybersecurity perspective, I think it's too broad. And you, you're actually gonna be blocking American companies, and and we saw a lot of majority and minority, um, which makes me think it's gonna it's too political. All right, we should have a process and just see the process, right? So real quick, oh, good evening. So let's look at the, what you call them real quick. We're gonna look at the, the summary again and just kind of wrap it up off the summary. I just kind of want y'all to think a little high level. Once again, this is a bill, right? So we gotta keep an eye on the bill to make sure it's not too broad, it's not stepping on uh united states rights or privacy rights so the Re restrict act emergency security threats and risk information communication technology aka the restrict act 
vendors from the U.S. and allied countries have supplied the world information and communication technology, ICT, for decades. The global ICT supply chain has changed dramatically. A number of prominent foreign vendors, many subjected to the control of autocratic and illiberal governments, have gained significant market share in a variety of internet infrastructure, online communication, network software, the growth of prevalence on these untrusted vendors pose a security risk to the nation's uh, economic and national security. So what are we going to do about it? We're going to need to do security reviews from a United States level for all software and networking. Um, you saw it, uh, vendors coming in selling uh, national products, right, to be posed as a national threat addresses the ongoing threat posed by technology of foreign adversaries by better empowering the Department of Commerce to review, prevent, and mitigate transactions that pose an undue risk protecting United States supply chain now and in the future. Right, so that's it. I just want to touch it at a high level. They named a couple, Kaspersky's, Highway, and TikTok right there, right? And <laughs> WeChat and Alibaba's Alipay, Alipay, right, which is their cash app, right? So those are products we're concerned with. And we really didn't do any review and they just own the country's network, dropping malware, dropping uh, uh, phishing attacks, uh, using dis and misinformation. So how do we make sure we're getting those reviewed and signed off in? Um, they're trying, but that bill is not a good bill, so. That's my two cents. So I just kind of want to walk through that. Shout out to Engineering Cannabis. Yep, that's yeah, this this bill would apply to TikTok. Yep. Good luck to casual economists. We don't want to jinx it. Shout out to but yeah, uh engineering cannabis. It's just a bill they're trying to pass to block TikTok, Highway, and a couple other um big companies that are actually just running amok in the United States. We didn't check security. We didn't do a risk assessment. We didn't do a supply chain. They're just out there, right? So I just wanted to kind of look at the bill from a high level and just kind of talk about strategically from uh, the United States. We need to, I know we don't want to block TikTok. The kid's going to go crazy, but um, I think we need to figure out how, how that's going to look when, once again, companies become, the crazy thing is, if it's under a million, you wouldn't review it until it got to a million. Would that be too late to actually do a risk assessment, right? Once it gets hot and rolling, <laughs> right, it could be too late to do a security review. To do a security review, once again, that's really all that's talking about. Risk information and communication, security threats. That that risk part is the security assessment, right? And that's real big in NIST and federal. Um because of the Casayas hack, they're really big on supply chain and risk assessment. So once again, how are we going to do that for a big software that's in the United States? So currently right now, I think hopefully they need to tighten the bill up, get some percentages, really talk about the framework and how that's going to work. Um, hopefully it's similar to FedRAMP. I think that's a good uh, security infrastructure. The problem with fair rent is a lot of small companies cannot meet that bar, right? So I think we got to figure out what does that look like, especially from a smaller company when it grows up. They can restrict the data TikTok collect or review. They can, but they're trying to figure out what's the fairest way to do that, right? And who's going to do that review engineering cannabis? You're 100% right, but who's going to give those requirements to TikTok and say, all the, they're trying, they're doing this first. They already said, you got to advance and give it to Oracle. We want all United States uh, data on United States soil, right? And two is they got a good <laughs> argument. We we collecting the same data as Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> Snapchat. We ain't doing more than any of those guys, Apple. So why are you being mean to us, right? So <laughs> those are some of the issues. So I think they're trying to figure it out. So I think they said, well, if you're in the United States company, that's cool. If you are foreign adversaries, that's not cool, right? So I think they're trying to figure out how to balance that. Then who's going to be responsible, right? They said the um, Department of Commerce is going to take on that role. Department of Commerce don't have that type of talent. <laughs> so, right, FedRAMP is on the Department of Homeland Security. 
Department of Commerce, I don't think has that type of talent. So that's one of the issues. Shout out to more cybersecurity jobs. Though. So the question is, who's going to do that and who's going to sign off on it? Like I said, FairRamp has a whole process. They have their own third-party auditors. That gets put in a front of board. If you don't agree, they have a board you can take your findings to and talk about POAMs, um, which is basically a schedule when you're going to fix it. I don't see any of that in this bill. So once again, we're working on I don't want the bill to step on the um, privacy of the United States uh, companies and take away products that um, United States citizens wants, right? There's always that balancing act. They have to work uh, backward, what data they can use to influence, build models to trade. No, facts or build propaganda. Now, you're 100%. We always talk about the same thing is put that stuff on the blockchain so it can be reviewed. What's your algorithm? What are you connecting? What's your auditing reports, right? We need to put that on blockchain and like engineering cannabis says, we can start running up our machine learning, looking at those things and building models so we can figure out what's going on. And even though it's in Oracle, is any of that data going back to China? Are we checking you know, the back doors on it, right? All that's... Uh, has issues with it right or or probable issues with it so like as you know cannabis and fluids you got to build models to track it right so what are those models the united states government is build tracking in how are we scanning it with our machine learning to figure out once again is this slide stuff back to china is it encrypted files we can't read but they're going back to china uh, who controls the servers they're on? Like I said, who does that whole supply chain cybersecurity review, right? That's really what we're talking about at a high level is who's going to do the review, who's going to be responsible. Um, are we doing it once a year, every three years? Are we going to ask them for a risk assessment and trust them, right? We, we do that to a lot of government agencies. Send us your findings every year, and then every, the third year we come out there. Are you going to do that with a foreign agency? You're going to give them a three-year run before you physically go check them, right? And if you go check them, who's going to pay for that, right? That's the added cost to them. Uh, we picking that bill up because we got some government findings on it, right? So those are all the things we have to work out. So that's all I have for today. I just wanted to, like I said, look at something a little different, kind of walk through a bill at a high level. I'll put both of those links in the uh, description if you want to check them out. Once again, uh, we're trying to get there. I think that's the right thing. Once again, you don't want to have it too broad where you just sucking up <laughs> uh, Americans' information, right, just because you can. And I don't think you want to block foreign companies just because you can, right? And two is, but I don't think you want to have <laughs> foreign adversaries running on 100 million devices either with no control on them, right? So security is always a balance. So I think that's what they're trying to get here. So Guillermo said, I wonder who they, I wonder who did they get to get a chop on this act in order to pass the conversation <laughs> test. I think they're still working on it, Guillermo. I need to check on that because, yeah, I found a few things. I don't, they have to build an agency for an investigation of big day. Yeah, I think that's what we're lacking, engineering cannabis. They're going to give it to the Department of Commerce. But like you said, I don't think they're used to big data. And how to do that, right? And when I perused through there, all of that was missing, right? They didn't talk about the percentage. They didn't talk how. They didn't talk automation of how they were going to make it easier. They didn't talk about findings. They didn't talk about poems. They didn't talk about mitigated controls. Um, so they just talked about a high level. All facts, man, facts. If there's anything you need from me, man, let me know. You good to go, though, man. You are good to go. Well, I'm going to shut it down. I just want to do late night with PBO. Let's get that hump day tomorrow. I'm dragging. <laughs> I'm dragging. I'm barely making it tonight. I don't know what's going on with me. I've been trying to work out a little bit. I'm kind of old. <laughs> I'll try to get a little better shape in 2023. That's one of my goals. But once again, uh, oh, let's see what. Uh, who knows how the day is harvest. I'm very worried about the default apps. We get on new devices. No, nah, facts. We get for a child app. We had to buy an SD card due to lack of. No, nah, you're 100 percent right, mm -hmm. Wilton, on that. And that's some of the things we're worried. The, the crazy thing about that is 
Uh, I know you're, I think you're overseas in the United States. Um, we're cool with the default apps, right? We give them too much power, and that's on you. We worried about the foreign people right now getting too many. But now you're 100 percent right. You need to, and we're getting better at that. But still, a lot of default default apps. You can get to your phone, your address book, your your drive, your pictures. So if that app ever gets run amok, you don't gave it access to everything on your phone and your tablet, right? So a lot of times when they ask me, I'm like, I'm not giving you access to any of that, right? And if I need it, come doing something special, I just give you access for that one time. I need to take this picture. I'm going to send it, but I'm not going to let you take over my my camera and my, and my camera, right, like that. Because you can take a video of me or take pictures of me. If you look at Pegasus that was controlled by Israel, they were cutting people mics on, taking pictures of them when they went right. Because that was a nation's government attack list, right? It was Pegasus, one of the top uh, viruses out there. So, um, I think we're getting better at that, Guillermo. Shout out to uh, Amazon and Azure. They're mastering that stuff. Then with the um, no SQL databases, I think we're doing a much better job. Because I did actually did um, that at warehousing, which was big data in <laughs> early 2000s. We thought a billion rows was a lot of data back then. So they got a lot more features with that. And shout out to uh, Amazon and um. Amazon and Microsoft has a ton of services now that can handle a petabyte of data. And uh, those big companies such as Disney, um, NASA are using those clouds and they're used to that type of data now. So I don't I don't think it's as hard as it used to be. <laughs> no, nah, that's true. It's, I was like buying a sack deal with a vendors products and they sell us another to use this. yeah it's weird you would think that would be built in i see that a lot which is a sad thing and not only is collection sometimes but but the analysis of your data how you can use it against yourself by foreign government is now that's true as the foreign government is the issue and they're pretty good about it because they're paying a long game right so they might keep your data for 10 years before they figure out how to use it right um japan and china got fake users on uh, Facebook slash Meta that they've been using for 10 years. So it looks like, oh, they got a thousand people, 20 of those friends are my friends. They've been doing that for a decade, right? For misinformation and disinformation. But foreign governments, a lot of times they're playing the, the big, the long game, right? Of what that looks like. You got to think to a lot of those authoritarian regimes, they're using that against their people, right? Um, I think it was china their um mass surveillance was so good their uh cctvs could actually take your temperature so if you left the house with a temperature doing the c19 they would come and get you because their their surveillance right from a nation state is unparalleled they could tell people if you they told you could go out one time and get groceries if you went out a second time they were pulling up on you Cause that's how good their surveillance is so <laughs> some of those regimes are uh master of surveillance well, i don't know about japan and china man one of those got a billion people man so um but nsa do they were collecting um they still you got on but they were they were actually tapping amazon and azure's they were um they didn't encrypt their traffic in their dr sites because they were using their own fiber they didn't think anybody could get to it they were hard tapping their fiber between their dr sites and the nsa was siphoning it off which they actually went dark it was so much information they couldn't handle it just google that that they uh it was out there <laughs> yeah it was no shout out to stone man you can't be snitching on the government man they're gonna shut you down <laughs> shout out to him though he did release it, man, but sometimes whew, you got to let that quiet, man. You got to get that to TMZ or something, man. You can't be leaking that, man. I don't think they're going to ever let that dude back in the country, man. You can't be snitching on the U.S. government, man. We're gonna come, they're going to come for you. They're going to, they, because they did that to Snow because they letting everybody know, man. You let out our secrets, you're going to have to leave the U.S. We're going to put you in Guantanamo Bay. 
So I don't know, man. Like you said, I I have mixed feelings. He 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 let everybody know what the U.S. was doing, but the U.S. was like, dude, you can't do that. We're gonna lock you up, man. So once again, I'm out. Everybody have a happy. <laughs> you gotta be careful, man. No stitching on the U.S. I'm out, man. Let me take my butt to bed. I'm dragging. It's eleven in the Midwest. So, and that little time change tore me up, too. I'm still adjusting. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Once again, I'm going to see you in those cybersecurity streets. They want to give me, I know, man, the U.S. don't be playing, man. They're going to put you in, be waterboarding you, man. I'll be messing with the U.S. I'm out, man. Everybody have a good hump day. Let's get it. Uh, shout out to my man. Good luck. I'm sure you're going to do well. Uh, let's 